Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another Acting on Instinct, the series where I teach you all kinds of tips and tricks to improve your gameplay in Command & Conquer Rivals. Today I wanted to cover the basics of map reading. Now I've had some feedback that people would like to see a series of videos analysing all of the maps in each league, in the same way that I did a video on the Champions maps. And I may actually get around to doing this between Intel reports for every unit in the game, including new releases, and all the other topics that I want to cover for Acting on Instinct. I also had some feedback that one of my previous thumbnails looked a little bit like a cyborg pointing to a blackboard. So I'm rolling those two together, and here's a beginner's guide to understanding how the maps work with the assistance of Professor Cyborg. Firstly, let's cover the different types of terrain used in maps, and how they affect gameplay. We'll cover each bit individually, then we'll come back and tie it all together at the end. Most common are plain, flat tiles. These have no effect on gameplay at all and are the generic tiles that your units move through. Pretty obvious, huh? And you thought this was going to be difficult. Secondly, we have Tiberium Fields. Now these are where your harvester goes to collect that sweet green candy that funds your army. There are a few things to consider when looking at Tiberium Fields. Firstly, how open are they? How open is the approach if your opponent decides to rush your harvesters? Are there good points to launch defence from? Obviously, Tiberium fields closer to your base are going to be easier to protect with new units, but fields close to pads can be defended whilst charging the missile. And fields hidden behind obstructions are going to be safer for your harvesters and tougher for opponents to get to. On the subject of pads, these are an important part of the map too, naturally. How many pads are there? Are there any that are closer to your base and thus will be easier to hold? How easy will it be to push onto further pads? Holding some pads will make defending your harvesters easier, and some will make a great staging point to pressure your opponent's harvester. Holding some pads can form a choke point that your opponent cannot cross easily. The size of the pad matters too. A 4-tile pad is considerably harder than a 3-tile pad to secure fully. Due to their size, they're easier to contest. Now the next bits of terrain are what I like to call obstacles. The missile silo is probably the most important of these. This tile is completely impassable to all unit types including aircraft, and also blocks line of sight for most units too. Next up we have craters and lakes. These block ground unit movement, but do not block line of sight. Lastly, we have pillars. These also block ground unit movement, like lakes, requiring any unit that doesn't fly to drive around them, but also block line of sight for most units, whereas lakes don't. The placement of obstacles can create choke points, areas where the battlefield narrows to only one or two tiles width that can be easier to defend simply because it's harder for your opponent to gang up on your units there. Choke points are valuable as they allow you to block your opponent's advances, giving you better control of the battlefield. You may be able to force your opponent into unfavourable matchups in order to push through to whatever's beyond, whether this be your harvesters or valuable multi-range units like the MLRS or Giga Cannons. The placement of obstacles also dictates how units must move across the battlefield. A simple lake between two pads means that snipers can target infantry on the other side, but counter threats must take the long way around, taking significant damage en route. It may also mean that reinforcements take a while to arrive, and that redeploying your forces to where you need them could become more difficult. In these situations, you may be forced to commit units to one area, and if you make the wrong decision in those situations, it can be difficult to correct. Now this brings us nicely onto another piece of terminology, and that then puts us one step closer to having to do a CNC Rivals glossary video! Lines of movement. When you look at a map, you should be able to read from the layout of the obstacles the flow of how ground units would move across it from one side to the other. Obviously this won't affect air units. From this, you can get a feel, feel for how the units move, and how easy or difficult it can be for them to redeploy across the battlefield. So how do you find the map pool that's used in your league? Well, you can find this here, on the league screen, in the top right. Give it a tap and voila, there's our map pool, shown in what I like to call blueprint format. 
Now, like most blueprints, these can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to them, so we'll just cover some basics here. The red and blue hexes are, of course, yours and your opponent's base. Those orange hexes are the launch pads. Green hexes are, surprisingly, the Tiberium fields, and the light grey tiles are obstacles. Note that blueprints do not differentiate obstacles. Lakes and rocks both appear as light grey tiles. Finally, the black tiles are impassable areas like the missile silo or the edge of the map. Now these blueprints will give you a vague idea of what to expect on each map, but nothing beats playing the maps and seeing them in action. So how does all this tie together? For this, we're going to look at a couple of example maps, as this is probably going to make it a little bit easier for me to explain, and it gives it in a more visual format. First up, Hidden Gems. Now this beach map is a very simple three pad map, but with a twist. The rocks near the Tiberium are a double edged sword. Whilst they provide some protection for your harvester, they also make it difficult for your own units to get in there and dislodge a well coordinated assault without pulling the harvester back and stopping it harvesting. There's also clear access to the pad on your side of the map and to the pad in the center. Unlike most open maps, there actually isn't a lot of area to manoeuvre around the centre pad, making that pad easier to hold than it would initially appear, and making multiple tile range units much more useful. These pad tiles just above the missile serve as the best, most easily defended places for two range units. Here they can hit multiple pads, and cover the bottom choke point created by the missile silo. It's also a difficult to reach spot, so they're fairly well protected. The bottom path gives you some mobility to the pad on the opposite side, but as mentioned it is easily blocked off, forcing combat more towards the centre pad. Now the rear pads are simple to defend, being a short and direct line from your base, but the silo choke point and the battle raging for the centre pad can make it difficult to extend your reach into your opponent's side of the map. As such, I'd look to hold the centre pad and choke point early, and then push forward when you can. Your back pads are easy enough to reinforce, so use any momentum from winning engagements to push onto their pads, whilst your reinforcements take the middle point again. Secondly, let's have a look at Frozen Road. Now, on this map there are two main lines of movement here. One across the south, which brings you directly into conflict for the centre pad. The other line is across the north, which brings you into conflict with the harvesters and the upper pads. Now the south, being considerably more open and easy to reach, is where you can expect most aggressive units to move to. The choke points on these top pads prevent aggression from reliably happening from the south to the north, as redeploying between the north and the south requires funneling through these bottlenecks. Generally speaking, your harvester is relatively safe on this map throughout most of the game, but will eventually come into easy reach of enemies on the top pad opposite you. Notably, the baseborn points also have a northward leaning. This means that whilst aggression north may be a little bit slower overall, it is still quick to reinforce your own northern pattern harvesters if there's an issue. Finally, let's look at Broken Mesa. Now your spawn point on this desert map is equidistant from both Tiberium field options, making either a potential choice. Personally, I prefer to micro my own harvester to the Tiberium field near the rock, as it's a longer path for my opponent to go through. Also, the general lines of travel that your units will follow will be upward and to the right, or downward to the left if you're on the right side, due to the positioning of the rocks. It's also easy to defend the top left or bottom right pads, due to their small choke point and distance from the enemy base. Notably, if you're going double harvester on Broken Mesa, it is a good idea to micro your harvesters to these same locations, as the equidistant Tiberium points will cause the second harvester otherwise to trundle off to the opposite field, which will force you to split your defence. Now the middle pad is also four tiles in size, and it's on the most direct route from each base, meaning that actually holding it long term will be difficult. Given the ease of defending the smaller pads, nuke launches will most likely come down to the wire, with timely contests on all of the pads winning out over raw counter choices more often than not. This means that this map ultimately favours more mobile and difficult to block off units like air units, for example the Talon or Venom, and jump jet troopers. 
Whenever you move into a new league, I would strongly recommend acquainting yourself with the new maps as quickly as possible, as they may work very differently to the maps that you're used to. The pool of maps used in a new league can have a hefty impact on the meta of that league, and what may have worked before may be foolhardy to attempt in your new environment. Examine each map closely, as we've done here, and you can figure out how each map best plays. Understanding the lay of the land and modifying your strategy accordingly is a big part of what separates the good players from the mediocre. As always, be sure to watch replays on those maps using the CNC TV feature in the Network tab. But also, jumping into a couple of friendly battles in your alliance is a great way to get to grips with the maps directly. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment below. If you want to stay on top of your game, slam that subscribe button and ring the little bell to be notified when a new video goes live. Finally, as always, I would like to remind you all that I receive no payments for these videos and aim to keep them ad-free. If you're finding them useful and fancy showing me a little love, I've dropped the link to my digital tip jar in the description below. It's simple, quick, and does genuinely really help me out. Anyway, happy sailing, and see you on the battlefield.